Joyce DeWitt is a name that many people associate with the popular sitcom Three's Company, where she played the sensible and down-to-earth roommate Janet Wood. But before she became the Janet Wood we all know today, something very drastic happened in her life that almost took everything away from her. What is that thing? Follow us along as we uncover the untold stories of Joyce DeWitt while also showing you some of her rare photos. Joyce DeWitt was born on April 23, 1949, the second oldest of four siblings born to Paul and Norma DeWitt. Joyce's passion for acting kicked in early. When she was in high school, she hopped into acting lessons, took part in school shows, and even rocked the cheerleading squad. All she wanted to do was study theater and make a career out of it. Her father was hesitant at first, but she managed to convince him, and off she went to college with theater as her major, while also bagging a master's degree at UCLA. But despite all her academic achievements, she ended up finding herself in the role of a legal secretary. However, she didn't let that discourage her. The dream of a full-time acting gig wasn't coming easy, and she had to find her way while keeping one foot in the legal world. But even in the face of challenges, Joyce kept moving forward, one audition at a time. She even took a shot at being Fonzie's girlfriend on Happy Days in the late 1970s. But, you know, sometimes life takes a different direction. Sadly, they didn't pick her for the role, saying that she was a tad too short and young for it. She felt terribly bad. It was a disappointment that was really hard to shake off. But as time rolled on, ABC tossed her a choice between two comedy pilots. But here's the catch. They gave her only 24 hours to make up her mind. Racing against the clock, she read both scripts in a hurry and made her choice. And you know what she picked? The one about a guy living with two girls, better known as Three's Company. It was a smart move because the other show never really took off. And there she was, stepping into the shoes of the sensible, down-to-earth, football jersey-wearing roommate, Janet Wood. It's like her path was paving the way for something big. Oh, and here's something amusing from her time on Three's Company. She had a unique habit. She always rocked pantyhose or tights while filming. That sounds like a personal choice, right? Well, it actually stirred up a bit of a tiff with the show's producers. But guess what? Her preference made her a hit with hosiery makers, and she became the face of Legs Pantyhose in the late 1970s. But the happiness didn't last long. Back in 1979, Joyce missed an episode of Three's Company titled Stanley's Hotline. Why? Well, the network tried to snatch back a raise that was promised to her. That hit her hard, like a heartache she couldn't shake off. She called in sick, not just physically, but because she was sick at heart, sick in the soul. It's like the world around her was a bit shaky. Joyce had a sit down with the big shot, the network president. And thankfully, they reinstated her raise. But when she was ready to jump back into action, the producers seemed to have moved on. They felt there wasn't enough time to prep, and they already had a reworked script in play, with guest star Anne Shadeen stepping into Joyce's lines. She felt left out in the cold, and that felt pretty heartbreaking. After the Three's Company's show ended in 1984, Joyce hit a pause on her acting career for a while and embarked on a different kind of journey. It was like the spotlight dimmed for a bit, so she decided to explore life outside the glare. She roamed the globe, seeking new horizons, and eventually settled in New Mexico. But guess what? The world became her stage, and she was off exploring before she made her comeback to the screen and stage in the 1990s. It's like she took time to rediscover herself outside the spotlight. Speaking of spotlights, let's talk about her and Suzanne Summers. It's like they were in a cold spell for three decades, not speaking to each other after Suzanne left the show due to a salary dispute back in 1981. Imagine three decades of silence, but you know what they say about time. It can heal. Finally, in February 2012, they patched things up. Suzanne invited Joyce to be a guest on her web series, Suzanne Summers, Breaking Through. It's like the clouds parted, and they found their way back to each other. Life finally kicked into a smoother gear for her until, well, a storm hit in 1995. You see, there was this buzz about her doing something that raised eyebrows, posing nude for a magazine called High Society. They had this image of her as the wholesome Janet Wood, and this news was like a bolt from the blue. It was a tough time, almost like a cloud casting a shadow over her career. But Joyce DeWitt never actually posed nude for High Society in 1995. In fact, she didn't bear it all for any magazine at all. The pictures that popped up in High Society were actually stills from a video she made back in 1976. That's even before she became the Janet Wood we all know. The video, titled Cheerleaders Beach Party, 
featured her as a cheerleader who, in a comedic sketch, playfully stripped off her clothes and dashed into the waves. That video never saw the light of day for the public to see. But somehow, someway, those images found their way into the magazine's pages without her permission or even her knowledge. When Joyce got wind of this, you can bet she was floored. Outraged is an understatement. It's like someone invaded her personal space without an invitation. So she took matters into her own hands and took the publisher of High Society to court, demanding $7.5 million. Her case was strong, built on claims of fraud, duress, and invasion of privacy. She even pointed out that the photos were doctored to make her appear more unclothed than she actually was. It wasn't an easy ride, but eventually the lawsuit found its end out of court in 1998. Joyce walked away with a sum of money and a heartfelt apology from the magazine. It's like she stood up against the tide and emerged victorious. She said she was content with the outcome, hoping her fight could pave the way for other stars whose images were exploited without consent. You might be wondering why there's no news about her love life. Well, Joyce's love life has had its own private nooks. Not much buzz, but still quite a journey. Back in the day, she found her heart beating in tune with actor and director Ray Buchtanica. They were like this pair that didn't need the whole world to know, and they shared a long, cozy companionship from 1979 to 1986. They didn't walk down the aisle or become parents, but they shared something special. Later on, she crossed paths with actor Randolph Mantooth, and they even reached the doorstep of engagement. It was like a promise hanging in the air, but life had its own plans, and their story wrapped up before the wedding bells could chime. After that, it's like Joyce decided to navigate life's map solo. She wasn't in a rush to find a new partner, and she wore her single status like a badge of honor. She marched to her own tune, not letting society's rules define her happiness. Joyce also spoke of valuing friendships and her work for the greater good more than romantic tales. But there was this one moment that cast a shadow. In 2009, things took a somber turn. Joyce was in El Segundo, California when she was pulled over for drunk driving. It's like a reality check, a moment that left a question mark on her seemingly content life. Police officers noticed some questionable maneuvers near the park barricades and decided to intervene. They put her through tests to check her alcohol levels, and she was detained. It's like a rough chapter that unfolded. Fast forward to May 27, 2010, a day that would carry its own weight. Joyce entered a plea of no contest to a misdemeanor count, a solemn note in her story. She was put on probation for three years, directed to complete a nine-month alcohol program, and handed a dollar, 510 fine along with penalty assessments. It was a tough time, which added a layer of sorrow to her story. Joyce DeWitt's life has its share of twists and turns and some not-so-happy moments. Like this one time, she found herself tangled with her business manager, Leonard Carter. It was back in 2010 when things got a bit messy. Carter pointed fingers at her, saying she didn't play fair with the contract, and accused her of not giving him his fair cut, a chunk of 10% from her earnings. He even claimed she kept some payments under wraps. The number he was after? More than $120,000. DeWitt wasn't about to take it lying down. She fired back, throwing a countersuit at Carter. She spilled the beans, saying he messed up her money, missed tax returns, and even took out cash without her consent. She wasn't holding back, accusing him of not playing by the rules. She wanted damages too, unspecified ones though. The whole drama played out, and in 2011, they settled it behind the scenes, shaking hands and agreeing to drop their claims. But the details of that pact stayed sealed. It was a private deal. Through the ups and bumps, Fans still got her back. They remember her, especially for her time in Three's company. It's like this heartwarming connection, with people hugging her and even shedding tears when they meet her. And you might notice DeWitt's hair has turned gray now, but she's still there, treading the acting path, just in a quieter theater space, not the big movie hullabaloo. It's like she's made her own space, away from the crazy glare of the spotlight, but still doing her thing. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click enjoy and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.